pretty much what we've seen the past three months now is real estate's going down one to two percent a month in most markets. Some people on the low end think real estate's going to go down five percent. Some crazy people are saying it's going down ten percent. So the question comes, what changes? What is different now in wholesaling? Wholesalers beware. The real estate market is changing for 2023 and there's a lot of things that are changing in this market that you need to know about. In today's video, I wanna break down exactly what you should expect from 2023, and most importantly, how you should change your approach when it comes to talking to motivated sellers, dealing with cash buyers, locking up your deals, and really getting the best deals possible, the best prices, so you can make the most amount of money in 2023 for wholesaling real estate. Before we break it down, do me a big favor, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe, and Let's get into it. So I think one of the most important things you have to understand when it comes into the new market for wholesaling real estate, especially in 2023, a lot of things are changing. We got to know what to do, but we have to do this in a very calm and orderly manner. So don't panic. Still, this year is the best time ever to get into real estate investing and wholesaling real estate specifically. This is such a huge opportunity. What you got to understand is in wholesaling real estate, you can make money when the real estate market's going up and when the real estate market's going down. We don't own the house. We only own the contract to the property, which means every single property we put under contract is just a different price. So if I own a property worth 300,000 and it goes down to 200,000, me as the wholesaler, I really have no risk in the deal. This means when real estate's going down, I just gotta get bigger discounts and then I can sell it and still make a big profit. Most sellers actually understand this. And when the real estate market's going up, you get a property under contract, you sell it, and you give it to a cash buyer while everything's going up. Now it's sort of a push and pull because when the real estate market goes up, it's a lot easier to sell a deal and usually you make more money per wholesaling deal. But there's a big con where every seller thinks their house is worth a million dollars and that gets really frustrating. You probably had to deal with a lot of this in the past couple of years. But now we're moving to the market where real estate's going down. It's not crashing or anything like crazy, but it is going down, which the big pro of this is sellers are a lot more motivated. There's actually gonna be a ton more deals this year with people just wanting to go out here and get rid of the property for cash. So you can do more deals, it's just gonna be slightly harder to find cash buyers. So there's always a push and pull with the market. There's some more pros that come in and then there's some more cons. It's up to us as wholesalers not to get emotional about what's going on, but really understanding the situation in the field and going after it. Sort of like playing football, maybe the defense is playing man coverage and we just gotta switch up the plays. And then maybe another game, the defense is playing zone. It doesn't really affect how I'm playing football and I'm not gonna panic because they're doing one or the other. I just gotta shift over my play calling and my plans of attack. One is not particularly worse or better than the other. We just have to adapt to what's going on. So the biggest change I see in 2023 for us is just changing up our marketing, our acquisitions approach, and most importantly, our dispositions. Let's talk about the first and foremost thing, the market. Market prices in real estate is going down every single day pretty much. And I'm not getting in a full hour presentation of why this is happening, but most of it is stemming from interest rates. Because inflation has just been so rampant hot and everything keeps going up in price, it sounds good for a little bit, but because costs keep going up, it's actually worse for citizens in the United States. So the Fed, the Federal Reserve, is actually increasing interest rates. And this has an effect on the real estate market. Because of this, the cost to actually buy real estate with a loan, a mortgage, is actually going up. And pretty much since last year to this year, it's over 50% more expensive to get a mortgage. So if I got a mortgage for $1,000 for a house, the mortgage now is gonna be 1,500. That's because interest rates went from 3% to 7% and should be going up even more in 2023. Obviously because it's 50% more expensive to get a mortgage, I can't afford a $300,000 home if that was my budget. That means people are actually bidding on cheaper real estate and people are not willing to get bigger mortgages with these mortgage rates. So prices are going down to meet the demand. Demand is going down, buyers have more power, and sellers are giving up more equity in their deals. Pretty much what we've seen the past three months now is real estate's going down one to 2% a month in most markets. Now, there's markets like Austin, Texas that are just dropping like crazy. And there's some pretty strong, resilient markets like Memphis and Detroit. But pretty much around the entire country, we're seeing real estate go down at least one to 2% every single month. Now, most experts this year have seen a forecast all over the board. Nobody even really knows where real estate's going. Some people on the low end think real estate's gonna go down 5%. Some crazy people are saying it's going down 10%. And on the other spectrum, we got realtors that are saying, oh, real estate's gonna go up 5, 10%. 
But really when you look at the big hedge funds and the big Wall Street type people, they're pretty much in between negative 5% to above 2% growth. Really what this means, if you average them all out, it's pretty much gonna be stagnant at zero. Maybe it goes down a little bit, maybe it goes up a little bit, but it's really not gonna affect prices too much. I mean, 1% of $100,000 is a thousand. So if my property, which is worth $2,000, goes up being worth 202,000 or 198, that's really not gonna affect us on wholesaling at all. So the question comes, what changes? What is different now in wholesaling? Well, because prices are getting a little lower than they were and things are trending a little more downturn, cheaper real estate is gonna be more attractive to your buyers. This is for two main reasons. Reason number one, our cash buyers are gonna be more attracted to cheap real estate because the cost of actually getting a mortgage is up 50%. They don't want to buy the average $300,000 house. They might want to get a two hundred fifty dollars or $200,000 starter home, which means it's a lot easier to sell a cheaper piece of real estate if I'm flipping it than a luxury million dollar mansion. So I'm probably going to go out here and look for cheaper real estate. This is where a lot of my cash buyers and cash buyers around the country are looking for. And that's probably where you need to be looking at too. Buyers also want to buy cheaper real estate because cheaper rentals go down in price a lot less. They appreciate less when real estate goes down and they're less likely to actually have price reductions on their rent. So rents usually don't go down on really cheap real estate versus a more luxury type property, rents might be going down right now for them. Because real estate is going down and buyers do have more of an advantage in this market, cash buyers are gonna be more of a necessity coming into 2023. This means we gotta spend more time actually pulling cash buyers lists, building real relationships with them, Maybe in the past couple of years, you weren't spending as much time following up with your cash buyers, building a relationship, actually seeing how they're doing, what they're looking for, things like this. This means you should probably spend at least 25% more time in your real estate wholesaling business on cash buyers than with marketing and motivated sellers. I would say a 70-30 split is probably gonna be your best bet. A lot of people have an 80-20 split where they spend 80% of their time marketing, talking to motivated sellers, getting deals, locking up contracts about 20% of their time dealing with cash buyers. In this market, if you're really struggling with your cash buyers, you might wanna shift over to a 70-30 approach where you're spending 70% of your time actually talking with motivated sellers and getting deals and 30% with cash buyers and following up. Now, if you're in a market where cash buyers are still plentiful, I'd still do the 80-20. But if you're really, really struggling, I would probably go the 70-30 route. Now, this brings the question like, Zach, I wanna do deals, I wanna wholesale, Everyone keeps saying I should find a cash buyer first, then a deal. I still believe you should find a deal first, then a cash buyer. Now, if finding a cash buyer is like something that's stressing you out like crazy and panicking you, and you're worried about proof of funds and all these things, then sure, find a cash buyer first. But if you really wanna get wholesaling done the most effective way and the fastest way to get your first deal in the quickest time horizon possible, I would find a deal first, use that as leverage to find a cash buyer, and then you'll be good to go. Now remember guys, you're going to have to get lower offers on your deals. And this isn't particularly a bad thing because real estate is going down. Obviously our offers have to go down even more. And because of this, we can actually give lower offers to our sellers and actually have legitimate reasons why. Number one, hey Mr. Seller, we're at this price. Remember, if we buy this property and renovate it, in two or three months, it's probably gonna be worth less then than it is now. So knowing you have to buy this property, knowing it's going down in value, we're gonna to have to buy it for this price. Now, obviously you can list it with a realtor, but prices are gonna keep going down from there. Also, most importantly, since real estate is going down, my offer right now might not stand in a week or two or in the next month or two. And remember, whatever discount you're really trying to get off of these motivated sellers, you're gonna to have to bring some of that discount to your cash buyer because they have a lot of power and they do demand more of a discount because they are taking more of a risk with the craziness in the market going on right now. Now, this isn't being said that you can't do any big deals, right? Because we're still doing 20, 30, 40, even $50,000 wholesaling real estate deals. We just gotta get massive discounts. And how do you get massive discounts? You have to lowball more. And remember, at freewholesaling.com, my free real estate wholesaling course, I really break down and share exactly how you can lowball sellers the right way where they don't even get mad at you. And the best part about wholesaling in this market in 2023, there's gonna be more deals. And when there's more deals, there's more opportunities to get these massive 40, $50,000 deals. If you lowball more using the right ways at freewholesaling.com, you can definitely get some of these home run deals. And remember the last part here with, I get a lot of questions, comments, DMs, everything like that, is Zach, what is the offer formula? Has it changed? Do I need to use the 7% rule? Do I use this rule? guys? I've done the math. I've shared with freehostling.com. I do a bunch of live streams. I show you all the time. The 7% rule does not work 
when your ARV is over $200,000. It absolutely makes zero sense at all. Your cash buyers are not looking for that big of a discount. And frankly, your cash buyers are looking to buy properties where they can make a 15 to 20% profit on it, not a 30% profit, that extra 10% for you. Now there's no perfect offer formula for wholesaling. A lot of it is changing and in a market where in Memphis, people might wanna buy properties for 70 cents on the dollar. In Florida, someone's at 83, 84. You might go up to Indiana where it's at 80. Every market's slightly different. But for a really, really rough estimate, and don't tip me to this number, this is a very rough estimate if I'm doing every wholesaler around the whole country, millions of people and millions of offers use the 70 percent rule if your arv is below one hundred fifty thousand dollars. you can even bring it up to two hundred thousand if you have a market that's pretty much struggling but really when you're between 200 and 250 i would probably be around 80 percent and then anything above 250 three four even five hundred thousand that's when you can start implementing the 83 percent rule and really this offer formula is arv minus repairs multiplied by that 70, 80, even 83%. Now, when you're doing major luxury, you can even push 84%, but really it is fluid, it is change, it is all over the board. You really have to dial it in in your own market. But for a lot of you guys out here, you're over inflating your ARV. And that is why my formula is not working for you. If a property sold 12 months ago for $250,000, do not use that as a comp today. You can use that as a comp, but you're going to have to discount what the property values have actually gone down. So a $250,000 house right now might be a good comp because it's very similar, but because it was a year ago, we're gonna have to discount that by let's say 15% and maybe make that comp 212 or $213,000. If you do that, my A over e formula works very well. A lot of these gurus think you're absolutely stupid and you actually can't do that yourself and you don't even realize that because you're not as smart as them. So they tell you 70% of the 250 a year ago because you don't know what you're talking about. If I figured out the ARV is 250 and the gurus think you're stupid, so you multiply that 70%, you're gonna be at around 175,000. Now, if you use what the real ARV is, 250, take off 15%, you're at 212. You multiply that by 83%, then you're at that same 175. You see how the gurus are telling you to do 70%. They think you're stupid and they think you don't understand comps at all. But when you actually get really accurate comps, that 7% rule means nothing. So guys, that is how you wholesale real estate in 2023. A lot of things have changed, but these changes can be for the better or the worse. It depends on how you make it. A lot of people see rain and they see bleakness and sadness and the worst thing ever. And then you see a farmer who drastically needs the water and he sees rain, he sees an amazing thing. Same thing on a nice sunny day. A farmer might want some sun, but he might need some rain and that's a sad day for him. And a person that loves the sun, it's an amazing day. It's really what you make it. That's how life is. So guys, go out here, start wholesaling, start making low ball offers and start doing some deals. If you want to learn wholesaling real estate for free, just go to my free real estate wholesaling course, freewholesaling.com. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, hit that like button if you got any value and I'll see you guys soon. This is Zach and signing out. Have a blessed one.